Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. I've been looking for a while now at ecosystems, and obviously before that, looking at enterprises, when we talk about enterprise architecture. And for me, it's, it's all only ever been about architecting with a big focus on commonality, standards, reuse and shared practice, etc. One question it raised, as noted by my friend, Neil Fishman, is, is there really such a thing as an enterprise in that context when we get big? Most organizations we actually work with are actually seeking to achieve many, many goals. A single holding name or an individual CEO doesn't mean there's a single coherent set of shared goals. So if we agree that enterprise architecture is about helping semi-autonomous units deliver common goals, do we really need to look at large corporations and multifaceted organizations like governments and public services as ecosystems in their own right, where goals may actually be in tension internally with one another? Is that why enterprise architecture has had a tendency to drop more often to the lowest common denominator of technology provision rather than succeed universally at business architectural levels? Is it time for ecosystems? Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody, and welcome to Toolkit Tuesday's special edition. Um, great to have you with us. Um, thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. Um, we, uh, my thanks, of course, go to uh, Paul Holman, uh, as usual, um, distinguished engineer with um, IBM, for his EA minutes. And uh, those of you who saw the last Toolkit Tuesday um, special will have heard about ecosystems architecture. And uh, that is something that we are uh, uh, working on inside the open group and, and uh, is attracting a lot of interest right now. So, um, uh, it's a great question to ask, um, you know, what is it time for ecosystems and not restricting ourselves to the enterprise? Um, one thing I do hope is it doesn't open up all the uh, old conversations about uh, enterprise architecture, IT architecture, solution architecture, technical architecture, all, all of that good stuff. Because uh, as, a, as a profession, architects have spent a lot of time uh, figuring that stuff out over the years. Anyway. Um, I will say while I'm on the on the topic of enterprise architecture, which of course is the uh, the focus for us here at Toolkit Tuesday, um, we at the Open Group are delighted to be partnering again with Forrester uh, with the, on their technology awards and specifically the Enterprise Architecture Award. So, if you are uh, if you if you think that your organisation uh, has been using enterprise architecture uh, in an effective way and you have an interesting case study you'd like to submit then i encourage you to uh, nominate your organization for an award this year you can find out more information about the forester technology awards on the open group website that's where i'd uh, point you to uh, on our home page you'll find out more there there are different awards for uh, North America, uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and Asia Pacific. And I know the closing date for nominations for the first one in North America is May 20th, so not too far away now. Um, so anyway, uh, that is uh, a, a quick plug for that and a warm welcome back to, a, to, to Toolkit Tuesday Special Edition. So um, today we're going to talk about the uh, portfolio of digital open standards, but before we do, um, I uh, have to go over how we ask questions here at Toolkit Tuesday. So 
um, please use the chat channel to communicate with uh, with other attendees. Um, tell us where you're joining us from. We always love to hear where you're joining us from, for example. But please put the questions in the Q&A channel and uh, you can get to that. If you don't see it automatically, you can get to that by clicking on the uh, three little dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. That will give you a, a chance to uh, bring up the Q&A. So please put them in there and I will ask those questions of our presenter today. And our presenter today is, uh, it's welcoming back, in fact, uh, Sonia uh, Gonzalez Paredes, who is the Digital Portfolio Manager here at the Open Group. Prior to this, Sonia was the TOGAF Product Manager and has 30 years of experience as a business and enterprise architecture consultant in different fields and industry verticals. Sonia's professional experience as a project manager includes leading highly effective teams and applying different frameworks, best practices and tools. And you will have heard, uh, hopefully those of you who are uh, regular viewers will have heard Sonia talk about the uh, uh, portfolio of digital open standards. And uh, there's been quite a lot of progress here. And Tony's going to talk today about how you can use it to uh, uh, help your own organization's digital journey. So a warm welcome back to Talk It Tuesday, please, for Sonia Gonzalez. Over to you, Sonia. Okay. Thank you for that, Steve. And Thank you everybody for having me here now. Like Steve was saying, I'm going to give you an update because I know that I have delivered all the presentations about it, about what we are doing in the portfolio of digital open standards and how we are structuring the information that is in there to be able to support your digital journey and, uh, and to lead us to what it really means to be digital. So this is the presentation, okay? And the title of this is the Open Group Portfolio Supporting Your Digital Journey. And, and mostly the idea for this is like, you may be a startup or you may be quite mature in your digital practice, but still you need to do things to transform your organization and especially to be able to convert or transform the challenges that we have in the market in opportunities. Uh, Steve has already presented me at the Open Group Digital Portfolio Manager. And I will start with this message that digital transformation is a journey, not a destination. So it's an effort that like, like enterprise architect, you have to be doing constantly in your organization. First, some important insight about digital transformation is something that is changing and changing every time. So I took this from Forbes. They have very good articles about what's going on in the market. And as we know, for this year, we have several challenges ahead. You know about EA, how generative EA is changing the way you're doing business, uh, which can be pretty good for us uh, as an organization, but also could, could bring new challenges and new dangers and new risks for us. So we need to be able to manage that properly. There are also challenges for the human talents to be able to embrace these new technologies and also continue taking advantage of the every work management Climate change is something that it's trendy now that we need to pay attention for. And also sustainability, which is a topic that here at the Open Group we are taking very seriously. How to sustain the environment that we live in, but also how to sustain your organization to be more efficient and also time with, the, with, the, with our planet. Uh, there are, of course, new regulation, privacy, cybersecurity, it's even more and more with all those new trends, especially with artificial intelligence. Uh, which is how now a new disruptive business model. We have cryptocurrencies, also has another uh, new business model that is uh, raising, and also things like there are new, of course, uh, there are new like virtual reality and demurables. All these represent uh, real challenges, but also could represent opportunities in this uh, digital journey. So the question that I need to be asking ourselves is, how are we going to start this journey? How are we going to transform being sustainable and scalable, meaning in this journey, we can start, but we need to be sure that this is an ongoing effort uh, to get uh, to, um, to get into your, into our goal. So we need to take some, some action on this and start the information process. Before doing that, it's very important to make some very basic distinctions because believe it or not, uh, there are people that are still confused about what really this information is. Of course, you need to have digitization to have your assets in digital format. And what is more than that, it's also transforming your processes, your business model, business and operational model, and it's a whole digital transformation into your company, the way you do business, the way you design your product and services, and also it's a cultural change. 
because you need to also change your people, your skills, and to make them understand that this transformation is for good uh, instead of creating the usual human resist resistance to something new. So that's why it's very important to have this digital distinction before you start your journey. So there are several things that we need to do for this digital strategy. We all have a strategy, a mission, ambition. However, we need to have a new component in there. How are we going to compete in this new changing world and to face this new trend and make them become opportunities for us? Of course, who's my customer? My customers are more demanding. Now they are part of my, uh, my value change. They are there into my company. So we need to, uh, to offer uh, something digital, a better digital offering. Of course, digital platform for that digital offering, supported by a digital backbone, which means uh, operations, infrastructure, um, assets and capabilities, which is, of course, also supported by our, the right organizational design. You know, right now, having still hierarchy structure is not really flexible and good enough for uh, really uh, taking this journey. And of course, the workforce management, uh, building new skills on people, but also making them to be so attractive to be in the company, they will not leave the company because you need to build this workforce to be stable for you. Innovation is a key word in here. You need to innovate to be able to compete and to take the best value from these new technologies as well. And all this is supported also for flexibility, this balance between flexibility and governance. It needs to be a balance between uh, autonomous teams that are related with having a, a less hierarchy organization, but also having metrics and to be sure that you are aligned with your strategy. And all this is meant to be sustainable and to scale. You know, you need to be able to sustain your practice till you are uh, getting along into this transformation journey. So the question is here, how, how do I do that? It looks like a lot. The question is start small and keep the ongoing effort. Uh, try to eat the elephant by small bites one at a time and continue incrementally giving value. For those of you that are architects, this is, sounds a lot like architects uh, as we do the assistant to be and identify gaps. It's not very different for this. And actually there is a very good blog that we have in our uh, library, which was delivered by Terence Blevins, who is uh, an outstanding contributor of the Open Group and a fellow, who will, he said that Enterprise Architectures is a package of tools that will help you precisely to take the right choice for really transform your organization to face digital transformation in a sustainable manner. So I invite you to also take a look to this blog that is in our Open Group blog site. And there are some steps that you need to take in this journey first. Like I was saying, you need a new business model. You need to transform that. You need digital marketing. You need a strong operational backbone. You need to go deep into your offering, know your customer. Data intelligence, this is basic now, to know your customer, profiling your customer, and actually is the basis for artificial intelligence. Improve your customer experience, this is key. You know, now your customer, uh, they are, uh, used to the three clicks principle or even less than that, you should be able to offer them something that is in which they will find value, find value quickly and go to a more innovation into a digital offering and digital design. And of course, all that supported by the right processes, operationals, and the right application and infrastructure, all of that connected and with the cultural change in there and doing this, like I said, as a journey in a stepwise approach. But with, for that, we need standards. And like Steve was saying at the beginning, at the Open Group, we offer a set of standards that all of them are strong, but they're even stronger when they are used together. And all of them are very good uh, to support digital transformation. So this is our vision into the portfolio of digital open standard, to position the Open Group as the premier source for open standards for the digital world. So that's our mission. And you may be asking, okay, how are you going to make that happen? And also stepwise, so how are we going to make this vision to materialize? First, we need to put together all of our standards. You know, all of them, of course, are in the Open Group Library, but we need to put them in a platform that will allow us to, to look for the content, to search for the content, to have everything in the same channel in a way that you can cross link and navigate through the different standards because it doesn't matter if you're an architect or a digital practitioner or an IT expert or, a, or an expert in customer service, 
at the end of the day, you look for your customer benefits. So you can use all standards together. And at the same time, we are also starting to offer our standard as code, meaning offering a platform that will allow us to deliver value quicker to the, to the market. And of course, going for smaller modular pieces of, of, of content that we are going to be delivering in an incremental way. And all that, of course, is supported by cross collaboration and openness, which is a, one of our basic open group principles. Uh, as we know, especially once that you there are members, uh, we work by consensus, we work together with our members, and this portfolio of digital open standards wouldn't be possible if we were not working as a team with the different forums to create this collection of standards that we are offering in this digital platform. So we are, we are offering now our standard of digital products and a digital platform. And what is new, because one of the principles is to incrementally deliver value over time. We try to offer value every quarter. But now, uh, besides the portfolio that holds the standards, snapshots, guides, and formal documents, we are also going to be releasing in, in the Edinburgh event, which is happening in a couple of weeks, a portfolio of case studies that is also going to be fed incrementally. So at the moment, the content of the portfolio is the TOGAF standard 10 edition, which is in process to be fully implemented at the moment. Uh, there is already a connection with the TOGAF standard 10 edition. We have the, the digital practitioner body of knowledge, the open agile architecture, the IT for IT standard, Archimate standard, and content for the security standards as well. All of them put in a way that uh, create, you can use it along with social market, digital marketing. It has a search engine. It's completely web-based, HTML-based. We're going to plan to start using EA pretty soon. That's part of the things that the company is doing. Of course, like also Steve mentioned, there's a, a portfolio of certification programs available for all that. Enterprise architecture is, of course, in the center, as well as cross-collaboration. And the new component that I was mentioning is now having the practical case studies, which is the new delivery that we are going to offer and release in Edinburgh. So you may be asking what's happening with the library then. The library is, uh, is a richer source of material that we have at the open group. It's going to stay the same. So you will log into the open group site Either if you're a member or non-member, you can download the standards in whatever format you prefer, either a PDF, an EPUB, digital edition, whatever. But at the same time, we are offering the portfolio as an additional channel. And now, and this is something like a preview, what you're going to see after Edinburgh and in Edinburgh in the release, this is the portfolio for case studies. We have called the case study collection, and in here, we're going to be feeding this at the moment. We have already a series of uh, case studies that we're going to deploy uh, in time of the Edinburgh event. So we're going to have the portfolio and we are going to have also case studies. And like I was saying, the idea is to keep this ongoing, continuous value delivery following uh, this DevOps approach in the way of providing this content. So this is the way they are connected together. We have the library and we have the other output like an additional channel. Again, this is how we are putting together these more organized and practices, even though they are supported by a standard. At the end of the day, people care about practices and the standard that are supporting those practices. And again, this is how the building blocks for uh, taking this journey, like, like customer centricity, digital platform, digital offering, governance, organizational structure for digital and business operational for digital, all of them are supporting by our different standards and also by the case studies that are, of course, using a different set of our standards. We're going to have a few minutes for a practical demo. I know some of you have already seen this demo and there will be new things, uh, by the way, this is the current version of the portfolio. In here, you will see all the graphical. And for example, in here, like I was explaining, if I click in Agile, I will see the open Agile architecture if I want to see other standards, like, for example, I want to know about digital strategy, you will see the DP book, and you will notice that in the left menu, you have in here all the content, and I can also navigate through the pages using the right menu. And there are several graphical uh, views in here. For example, we have a life cycle view, which is, by the way, you will see an improved version of this in the, in the release that is coming in Edinburgh. In here, you should be able to navigate not only through the IT for IT standard, which is in here, the export value stream, 
but also this has a connection also with uh, with the DP book standard. Some of these uh, icons in here also will allow you to navigate and see content from the DP book that is uh, supporting the IT for IT. And so you can again use the left menu, use the different visualization. We have another visualization uh, for for the DP book that you can also click. And you can use the search facility. For example, if I click digital, for example, of course, I will get a lot of entries. And you will see in here that I have content from the DP book, definitions from the glossaries. I have also content from the um, IT for IT standard and another content that is in here. So you can, and if you, of course, if you click in here, you will see, you will be directed to the exact place where the content is you go back and you continue seeing the search. So this is uh, one of the benefits of this is like that you again can look for the value through the different places into the standard. Uh, I think we need to uh, stop reading here. Let me stop and share again the presentation very quickly to give the final message. And it is the final message that coming together is a beginning, but keeping together is progress and working together is success. So again, at the European, we believe that this synergy between our standards and our forums is the key for success. So I invite you to take over the digital portfolio, start exploring it, to find the benefit, and send us your feedback. That is very important for us. And especially be aware of the ones of you that are going to be in Edinburgh. Uh, you will be able to see the thing um, happening there. Uh, but if not, uh, everything will be published as proceedings. So you can take a look at what we're going to publish as new in the portfolio, especially for the case studies. So thank you very much and open for some Q&A if we have any at the moment. Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you. And um, it, it's it's encouraging every time we see uh, a, a presentation on this. It's it's great to see the progress made. And I know uh, it's going to be exciting when we get to uh, Edinburgh in, uh, in a couple of weeks or less than that now to uh, to um, be able to show some of the uh, the very latest uh, improvements that you've spoken or you've hinted at today. So uh, thank you very much for that, uh, and congrats to the whole team who's in involved in this. It's uh, it's great stuff. So um, get to some some questions um, before, and I'll come back and talk about the uh, the summit in Edinburgh right at the end. But but um, <clears throat> first first question uh, here. Um, as as organizations are increasingly creating digital products, is there anything in the portfolio that covers digital product management and, and can help guide people through that um, fairly new area? Uh, actually, yeah, there's some valuable content about digital product value stream and management in the new version of the IT for IT standard, which is integrated into the portfolio. There are some also useful content into the DP book. But as I was mentioning, we are in a constant improvement and we are also restructuring the digital practitioner body of knowledge and precisely digital product management in one of the guides that we are calling in playbooks. Uh, so keep the tune because probably sometime by me this year or October the latest, we will be releasing more about that. But at the moment, there's content about digital product management uh, in the IT for IT standard, uh, a little bit in the DP book. And also you can find some interesting concepts about product design and innovation in the open IR architecture as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so next, next question. Um, clearly the focus so far has been on um, getting standards in there in into the portfolio it's what what the open group is uh, is best known for of course but uh, is, uh, is there a plan to include information about specific industries or verticals uh, inside the portfolio so that it's uh, kind of more directly uh, appropriate or tailored somewhat for uh, for specific industries yes actually the idea is like if the the reference uh, lands over a guide or a standard format is going to be in the portfolio. If it is something more practical, it will land over the case study collection. Both of them will be connected. So, and by the way, I couldn't present the case study collection because we haven't released it yet, but in right. there we have organized the icons by vertical. So you will see government, industry, services, research, 
And some people have said, why don't you organize the inbound practices? So probably we will have several different phases for that, depending on the progress. But the response is yes. And actually, there's already conversation with the healthcare forum to probably include the HERA reference architecture in the portfolio. Right. Okay. Okay, good. Well, you've you've sort of answered the uh, the the next question that that's uh, that's come in, and um, probably the last one in, from a time point of view. But is there any more you can say at this stage about what case studies will be published? Um, there are a couple of case studies from Archimate. I think the ones that you that are familiar with Archimate may guess which one those are. And uh, it's also um, there are three case studies that were given for by the government EA. Uh, as you know, uh, the India team has been uh, uh, sharing and generating all these India awards. So those case studies are also going to be there. And right. we already have three that have migrated. There are more that are coming. And some of these case studies, I am familiar with them because I had the honor to be the judge uh, for that. And those case studies are really a real practice from our standards. So right. really, whenever we, and there are, there's more coming. There's a long list of case studies that I know the India team is going to be giving us, besides some other ones that may come uh, from Archimate and, and probably also from the digital space. And also, if you have a new a case study, even if you're not a member, you can send out that case study. We can publish that in the library and also add it into the case study collection. Right. Okay. Sonia, in the interest of time, we're going to leave it there. But uh, thank you very much for the for the update on this, and um, I encourage everyone to uh, look out for uh, more on the portfolio of digital open standards as we move forward. So okay. for now, thank you very much, Sonia Gonzalez. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you. So bef before we wrap up, folks, um, uh, just uh, Sonia had mentioned uh, Edinburgh a few times. The Open Group uh, is hosting a summit uh, at Edinburgh um, a week after next, actually, April 22nd to 25th um, in Edinburgh at the uh, International Convention Centre there. And uh, the theme of the event is ecosystems, architecture and AI standards. So you'll hear more about the ecosystems architecture uh, topic for sure and you'll also um, hear more about the uh, portfolio of digital open standards but it's it's going to be a, gr a great event many of our forums and work groups are there uh, obviously toolkit tuesday is a very much a global audience so many of you won't be able to uh, be in the area of edinburgh in scotland so um, uh, I appreciate that. But uh, any of you who are in the UK and, uh, and tempted to go, we'd love to see you there. Uh, more information on our website. Um, and uh, as for Toolkit Tuesdays, well, we used to run these every, uh, every two weeks, as you may know, if you uh, have attended one before. And um, then we uh, we put them on pause and said we'd come back for specials. Now, there's a lot of demand for the specials. So we are actually going to come back um, in a month's time. And uh, we're looking at possibly coming back uh, on a monthly basis for a while um, because there is uh, a lot of demand from the audience and also from uh, from presenters who want to share um, tools and tricks that they might have uh, that might help enterprise architects too. So next one will be May 14th. Watch out for that. Um, we'll announce the uh, topic soon. But meanwhile, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you again to Sonia, our presenter today. And uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, um, you'll keep safe and well and see you next time. This has been Toolkit Tuesday. Thank you.